zone, zone. But he said, yeah, Boy, that, the gears in that guy's mind didn't mesh for a long time, I'll tell you that. He hit me. Last week we were in San Diego. Tonight we move up the Californian coast to Candlestick Park in elegant San Francisco, where the Miami Dolphins take on the 49ers. Good evening and welcome to our Sunday date with American football. Miles, how do you read tonight's clash? Nikki, the Dolphins have really got it together. Right now they're on top of the American Conference East Division and come to Candlestick Park with three straight wins all under rookie sensation quarterback Dan Marino. The 49ers are doing all right also. Joint leaders of the National Conference West Division with six wins, three losses, but seem to have some sort of home field jinx. In their home games over the last two years, they've only won one game in eight. Well, after Super Bowl 82, the toast was to superstar quarterback Joe Montana of the 49ers. He and they could do no wrong. But after a meteoric rise to win Super Bowl 16, the 49ers came down to earth with a thud. They finished last year's strike-shortened season with an embarrassing three wins and six losses. Now, despite that record, Joe Montana is still one of the best young quarterbacks around. He was the golden boy in 82. Now he has to prove that winning Super Bowl wasn't a flash in the pan. Watch out for Wendell Tyler. He used to be with the LA Rams and has added a new dimension. He led the NFL in scoring and was the Rams' rushing leader the 49ers need players like him. Another player to watch out for is number 64, Jack Hacksaw Reynolds. Now, apparently, he got the name Hacksaw when one night, after a particularly bad defeat, he got a hacksaw and went to work on demolishing his car. <laughs> That's true. Tonight, we get our first look at the man everyone in the NFL is talking about, Dan Marino, the sensational rookie quarterback for Miami. Three weeks ago, when the Dolphins were staggering along at three wins and three losses, regular quarterback David Woodley was benched, and 22-year-old Marino got the call. Well, the rest is all history. The Dolphins now head the division, and Marino in four games has established himself as the top-rated quarterback in the AFC. Dan has all the qualities needed to become a top-flight quarterback. Mobility, strong arm, a quick release, but above all, leadership. The running backs, Andrew Franklin and Tony Nathan, are again galloping with confidence. And Marino's pet target, wide receiver Mark Duper, is grabbing passes as if he invented superglue. Add the fact that Coach Don Shula turned down a million-dollar offer to coach in the rival United States Football League, and it appears that the Dolphins have finally put their house in order. Now, you might remember that the American media did a big hype earlier this season about John Elway of the Denver Broncos. Now, Miles, if Marino is so great, where does that put John Elway, who was the number one draft pick? Well, Elway is still a great prospect, and uh, he undoubtedly will become a great quarterback with more experience. But normally it takes about three to five years to groom a quarterback. And if you take that into consideration, and Marino being an instant success, you can see why Marino is such a great one. He's really something. So the stage is set, and the 49ers need a win tonight to crack that home jinx. We'll join the action for San Francisco's first drive. They're on their own 49-yard line. Our NBC commentators are Merlin Olsen and Dick Enberg. Second down, a long five. Play action to Tyler, and the throw to Wilson. A first down at the Miami 40-yard line. San Francisco's first invasion into Dolphin territory. 11 yards on the play. Joe Montana getting a little extra time, doing a good job of play action faking here. Faking the ball into the line to Tyler, takes a quick step back, and Wilson, who'd run an excellent pattern to the outside, will take a strike right there. Now that's the kind of play that the 49ers love to run on you, but that only works if you can keep your running game going. And Bray going in motion. Montana drills it complete to Wilson. And the former Washington State star has the ball near another first down. Nine or ten yards on that catch. Dwight Clark comes out. Eason Ramson, a second tight end, is in for the 49ers. Tyler, he's got blockers. And has 
the first down at the 29 yard line. A good job by Brzezinski to take out the interference. Jetson came up from his corner to trip up the runner. Roger Craig, the man we're talking about, threw a nice block for Tyler. First down, San Francisco at the 29. Tyler flags down as Tyler slams to the 20 yard line. Charles Bowser made the tackle along with Glenn Blackwood. Oh well, they indicate holding against San Francisco. Jack Reynolds working on some defensive strategy as the veteran linebacker talks to his younger counterparts. That's not a spelling test. He's diagramming some of the plays, and you won't find a better prepared linebacker anywhere in football than Jack Reynolds. Ten-yard penalty against the 49ers makes it first and 20 for Montana. Got a man wide open. Wendell Tyler was he inbounds? No. He did not get both feet in. Tyler was left all alone along the sidelines. Bill Walsh saying I thought he had both feet down on the sideline. He's got to get both feet down inbounds. Montana throwing a beautiful strike on this play. A planned rollout to give him a little extra time. You see the cut by Tyler right there. A perfect pass. Now watch Tyler's feet. Catches it. He's got one foot in. The other foot was in the air. And that's not good discipline. If Tyler drops that other foot, he's got to pass inbounds and a big first down. That little toe dance the good receivers do. He had a chance, but the momentum carried him out of bounds. Montana, five for seven passing. Good protection. Dwight Clark is going to go all the way for a touchdown. For the seventh time this year, Montana to Clark for six. The interesting thing about that pass is that Dwight Clark is absolutely covered on the play. He's double covered, in fact, by one of the Blackwoods, Glenn Blackwood and Gerald Small. Now watch the throw anyway, which goes right between the two defenders, and it was actually Blackwood who knocked Small off. I think if he hadn't hit him, he may have been able to at least make the tackle. Ray Wershing adds the extra point, and it's seven to nothing, San Francisco. Wershing will kick it off to Fulton Walker. Walker coming up to his five yard line. Dangerous return man. And he's down at the 34 yard line. Dan Marino just 22 years of age in his fifth start. Trailing 7 nothing ball at the Dolphin 34. Franklin. About four yards right. after the 38 yard line. Lawrence Pillars, 65, with support. Sell out crowd of 60,000. Entertained with an early 49er touchdown. They're trying to get a win at home, a rarity for San Francisco. 7 0 San Francisco. And Tony Nathan from Marino is out of bounds with a first down in front of Bill Walsh, the 49er coach, at the. 47 yard line, a nine yard play. Lott and Turner made the tackle. Tony Nathan, the kind of big play back that Shula has needed in this backfield. He catches the ball well and, of course, runs exceedingly well outside. Nathan out there by himself. The blitz was coming to the inside. 58 Keena Turner out there to, to put the clamps on him finally, put him out of bounds. Nathan coming into this game, the leading Dolphin receiver with 33 catches. And Johnson, despite an injury, is in the ball game. That is Johnson lined up at tight end left. Nathan on first down, stopped just shy of the 50 yard line. A gain of about three. It'll be second down and seven. 49ers lead here in the first quarter with four minutes remaining in the period. Second and seven for Miami. Marino. Oh, nice fake by Marino. And then out of bounds quickly at the San Francisco 42 yard line with a first down. Merlin, that fake was so effective when he threw his arm forward. There were three 49ers in the defense that jumped in the air. Well, you watch a young quarterback and you find out very quickly whether he wants to run with the football or whether he would rather pass it. Marino has illustrated early that although he can run, he usually runs just to set up the pass. Now, you're absolutely right. That's 58 <laughs> Willie Harper there, or Keena Turner, and Ronnie Lott, both frozen by the fake. They didn't believe he was going to run it. He did. He picked up a nice first down. Reno from Pittsburgh. Tired of number 13 with the Panthers, a la Tony Dorsett and Hugh Green, two All Americans who preceded him at Pitt. In 
incomplete, but a terrific throw against this body. Matt Moore, he motioned Moore to come back and hit him right in the numbers, and it went through Moore's fingertips and off his chest. Williamson on the coverage, but the ball was there. Second and ten, Miami trailing seven nothing. Three and a half minutes left in the first quarter here in San Francisco. Oh, Mark Clayton on a little reverse. And Clayton, the rookie from Louisville, is inside the 35-yard line. He'll be short of the first down. Mark Clayton, an exciting young runner as well as a receiver. You get a chance to watch a little bit of blocking going on on the outside. Duper becomes a blocker on this play. Now he's lining up on one on one on Dwight Hicks. Hicks is doing a little rodeo act. A little bulldogging out in the middle of the field there. Well, Duper got his man, I guess. Yeah, well, I guess he did. Uh, Hicks definitely didn't get part of the tackle, did he? 32-yard line, and it's third and one for Miami. Foster into the tight end here. Franklin running into his blocker, and it's going to be close on the measurement for a first down. Eric Wright came up from the corner. Ricky Ellison, rookie linebacker in on the stop. Well, let's see whether he'll have to finesse or make a finesse call on fourth and short or whether it's a first That's down. Short. Well, will Shula Gamble go for a long field goal try? Well, it's, that's a long, long field goal, and Uwe Von Schaman is only two for his last six. He's not kicking it well. I think they'll go for it. And here's a critical call for Miami at the 32 of San Francisco. It's fourth and inches, and Marino and the Dolphins go for it. And Marino easily sneaking behind his right guard, Ed Newman, the strongest of the offensive blockers in front of the rookie quarterback, and that's a lot of yardage for a sneak. First down, Miami at the 29 of the 49ers. Dick Enberg with Merlin Olsen. A minute and 42 seconds remain in the first quarter here at Candlestick Park on a beautiful football day in this marvelous city. The Miami Dolphins trying to drive to a tying touchdown have just made good on a fourth and inches situation. Marino on the sneak, and it's a first down at the 29. Nathan getting outside for good yardage. Stepped out of bounds at the 24 of San Francisco after a gain of five. When Don Shula has his offense running on full and all the cylinders working, and certainly one of the important cylinders, number 22, Tony Nathan, he is a tough man to put a defense against. He uses those tools so well. With Marino, who can throw it, he's got deep speed with Duper, he's got power up the middle, and of course he's got Nathan outside. Second and five. Going for six, wide open is Nat Moore, touchdown. The veteran Moore almost led too far. Marino kissed as he threw the ball, and he hits his veteran receiver a 24-yard score. Marino continues to amaze, and Nat Moore, who's really become more of a control receiver, found some openings on the right-hand side and breaks away from number 42, Ronnie Lott. Marino looking almost all the way at Moore on that play, away briefly, but watch this great catch by Moore, right off the fingertips, controlled it, the, the official right on top of him, keeping an eye on him to make sure he did indeed have control of that football. That sign is for the San Francisco fans saying, hey, you can't win at home. They've won only one game in the last two years here, so they're trying to pretend that they're not at home and want their team to be thinking they're on the road in the Orange Bowl. Well, Uva Von Schaman ties it up with the extra point. Oh, was Nat Moore open? And it's a seven all time. Just how open was Nat Moore? Putting a little move right there. Lot expecting him short. He tried to chuck him and missed the chuck. Boy, you can't afford to let a speedster like Moore loose like that. Into the second quarter and the Dolphins drive has reached the San Francisco 15-yard line. Four minutes into the second quarter from the 15. Quickie to Moore. And a little veteran fumbles the ball but out of bounds and even there Miami picks up an extra yard or two to the 11-yard line. It'll be second and six. Dwight Hicks over to make the stop. That Moore I think very comfortable in his new role. Remember last year, Don Miami he told us he didn't think he'd be back this year. He thought his career was really coming to an end as a Dolphin, but he certainly is back. Just changed his role a little bit. Second and six. And that's Franklin bowling up the middle. And a good defensive play by the 49ers. 
They're claiming a fumble, and Jack Reynolds has yes. the football. They've yes. got it. Hacksaw comes up with the rutabaga. Miami brought Bruce Hardy in motion on that last play to trap on the inside. They ran the big back up in behind him, but Jack Reynolds just slipped up in there, a couple of good pops, and they took the ball away from the Miami defense. Perhaps we can see it on the inside now. Good stack, picks in there, board in there. Well, lots of bodies, and there's Reynolds pulling that ball away. Somebody just popped it loose. San Francisco stopping Miami, taking over at the nine yard line. And Montana going to go for a long one. Now has to dump it off to Craig. And the rookie from Nebraska stopped at the 17 yard line. That was designed for something deeper. They were looking for Wendell Tyler deep down the middle, but he was well covered. Talking to the San Francisco coaching staff, Dick, they have so much respect for Bill Arnsparger, for Shula, for this defensive team. That it's difficult, they said, to try and attack a weakness on this defensive team. What you almost have to do is attack their strength, which is their ability to react. You try to show them something and get them to react and then take advantage of that reaction. Second down and three. Craig again. Ooh, almost fumbled that toss. He has a first down out at the 22 yard line. Good speed, 4 6 speed for this 222 pounder. We'd mentioned the importance of the running game to Bill Walsh in last week's ball game. They only had 85 yards rushing and a very disappointing rushing effort against the New York Jets. And of that 85 yards, 50 of it by Montana. Tyler, for example, nine, eight yards and nine carries, less than a yard a carry. They need to have better numbers than that so that they have the alternatives clearly in the mind of the defense. If they can shut you down and say you've got to throw the football, well, they can make it tough on you. From the 23, play action, Montana. And he gets rid of it to Craig. Nope, they had whistled it dead. They're saying that betters, not betters, but number Dewey. 77, A.J. Dewey, who'd come yeah. in, had it the grasp of Montana, and the whistle had blown the play dead. And look who's back from an injured groin, a pulled groin that's kept him out of action. You saw betters driving inside, and Craig was the man who was trying to stop Dewey. No chance, and clearly he was in the grasp of the linebacker. Montana doing a good job of getting it away, but that rule is designed to protect the quarterbacks, and this is the case where it hurts the offensive team. And it hurts the 49ers as the sack takes it back to the 13-yard line, second and 20. Craig. Ooh, is he hit at the 18-yard line as Doug Betters trailing the play hammered him hard. Krasinski was there as well. And at the 18-yard line, it'll be third down and 15 for San Francisco. 13 sacks for Betters, and he just followed that running, or actually that little swing pass very well. Short yardage. Eight minutes left in the second quarter. Good protection for Montana. Mike Wilson at the 45, the 40, the 37-yard line. Wilson's third catch of the game and a big one for San Francisco. The starting center, Fred Quillen, has been replaced by the starting guard, Randy Cross. They've got a, a rookie, Jesse Sapolo, uh, in there. So he had to do a little rolling to get some time. Rolled out, found the open man, and... That's classic uh, 49er offense. Both Clark and Wilson to the left with Wilson in the slot. Fake to Tyler. And going for it all. Earl Cooper was a running back, a fullback out of Rice, and such an outstanding receiver. Caught uh, 83 balls back in 1980, was number one in the NFC. And Cooper now wearing a wide receiver or tight end number, 89. Yeah, with Cooper playing mostly uh, as a receiver, 49ers have really only four running backs, so Cooper has to double up. Second and ten from the Miami 37. Tyler. Oh! All the way to the 18-yard line. What's that expression? Quick opener, and Tyler was through like a shot. Good blocking by John Ayers and Russ Francis on that last play, but... Tyler is one of the most explosive backs in all of football. Look at him here, and that's look at the hole he has. 
They anticipated the play to go to the other side of the line. Tyler saw the opening inside, and a good back gets to that opening. 19 yards and a first down at the 18. Tyler again. And he's inside the 15-yard line. Bill Walsh talked about Tyler and the importance that he has in their scheme. He said since he dislocated his arm, dislocated his shoulder, he has not been able to come back and run effectively. Ball at the 14-yard line as Walsh studying his game plan. Has only the one running back, Roger Craig. And it's Craig, a little misdirection. And he's inside the 10 to the 9. That'll be close to a first down. John Sandusky, Bill Arnsparger. That's the defensive mind right there. You see him giving the signal for the defense. Pretty obvious what they'll do here. They're coming with all the big boars. Third and one. 49ers like to throw to Tyler in the flat in this situation. But they stay with Craig on the ground, and he has a touchdown! What a drive by San Francisco. It started with a fumble recovery back at the 49er nine-yard line and it's capped off on a ten-yard rumble by Roger Craig. You see Bill Arnsparger asking A.J. Dewey what happened on that play. The Miami defense obviously suckered out on it. The extra point is good by Ray Worshing and San Francisco owns the lead 14 to 7. You look at it right there they were able to get into the secondary and Lyle Blackwood, the man who had a shot at him, but he did not have a very good shot. Put your helmet on and look out. He's coming right into your lap. Oh, he may get there instantly. Fourth touchdown for the rookie this year running, and it's 14 to 7, 49ers. Worshing's kick is short. Fulton Walker at the five. Oh, he's got a hole. 30. And he's out across the 35-yard line before Dan Buns can make the tackle. Candlestick Park sell out 60,000. The 49ers leading 14 to 7. Eric Loxo, the right tackle for Miami, has been injured, and Cleveland Green has replaced him, number 74. Marino and a short gainer out to the 40-yard line. Nat Moore, Ronnie Lott on the coverage, number 42. Dick Hendrick, Merlin Olsen in San Francisco, where the 49ers lead the Dolphins 14-7, a battle of first-place teams. This is a second-and-seven play, and Nathan pulled down after a one-yard game. Tenacious defense from number 74, Fred Dean. Dean more renowned as a pass rusher than for his ability to play the run, actually coming outside expecting a pass. Gets hung up by Cleveland Green 74, but by virtue of his position and his speed, Gets outside, gets a good piece of the tackle, gets him down on the ground, going to be third and seven. Dean, who leads the 49ers again this year in sacks with nine, and he's looking for a chance here as Marino works out of the shotgun, third and seven. Wide open, that's Joe Rose, and Rose, who played across the bay at California, has a first down at the San Francisco 41-yard line. Well, that's the, one of the many charms of this great city of San Francisco. The cable cars, of course, are not in operation now. Total renovation. But uh, the men who drive those cars, uh, they learn to play the bells. In fact, there's a contest every year, the most musical of those who can play the bells. On the sidelines, rooting on the 49ers today. Miami trailing 14 to 7, a first down at the San Francisco 41. Marino looking for something big, now in trouble. Back at the 49-yard line. Reno has really had an outstanding record of not being sacked. Has been getting great protection from his offensive line. But this San Francisco defense has 33 sacks on the year. Now 34. They were able to get a lot of bodies through there. And he almost got away from board. But just, in fact, he did get away from board before Dean put the clamps on him. But you get that many people back there, it's tough to get away. And credit Pete Kugler. The nose guard, he was the first man to flush Marino out of the pocket. Second and 21, screen to Woody Bennett. 
Almost fumbled as he gets to the 49-yard line. Keena Turner and Ronnie Lott put quite a hit on the ball carrier Bennett. The third and long. And that's the two-minute warning. It comes with one minute 56 seconds remaining in the first half. San Francisco leads Miami by a touchdown. Bill Walsh, his team, defensively, has Miami in a tough call. Third down and 16. Ball at the 48-yard line of San Francisco with a minute 56 seconds remaining in the half. Let's see if George Seifert comes with a blitz here. They love to blitz you. Got four man, four defensive linemen down. Out of the shotgun. No. Marino gunning it to Rose. What a throw by Marino and a first down at the 24 yard line. You can't throw the ball any better than that. Well, Dan Marino has one of the strong arms in the NFL, and without that kind of strength, there's no way he'll complete that pass. We're going to watch Rose quickly, and then we'll get back to the action because they're ready to snap the ball. Right on the money, 25 yards. Back to Rose again, and he's inside the 20-yard line. A gain of five. As Marino going without a huddle, 122 left in the half. You remember that Marino called the timeout a few moments ago. They may wish they hadn't as they try to go in a hurry-up offense and beat the clock. 115 and counting down. Clayton to the left, Cooper to the right. Down the middle, touchdown, Nat Moore. He's two for two. Find the open receiver, get him the ball. What a great pass. Dwight Hicks and Carlton Williamson, or Car Carlton Williamson, the men who are defending on that play, but great protection here. You'll see Dean come in from the left side of your screen, and Marino just ducks to the side and gets away from him. That's the kind of movement a good quarterback has to have. And look at that strike. Saw the open man, and within just a fraction of a second, that ball was on its way and a perfect strike. That's that's the kind of thing that has earned Marino such great respect from not only his own coach, but other coaches around the league. He has the strength and size to break away from Dean. Smaller quarterbacks might have gone down there, then he spots the open man. It wasn't a perfect spiral, but the ball was there so quickly, and Moore has his second touchdown. 19 yards on the throw. Uva Von Schaman trying to tie it up for Miami. The third quarter was a defensive battle as possession changed hands five times, the only scoring play being this 35-yard field goal by Miami's Uwe Von Schaman. The Dolphins took their three-point lead into the fourth quarter, where we rejoined play with San Francisco's drive at the Miami 25-yard line. Third and one. Break. Breaking tackles, and he has a first down as both Blackwoods had a shot at him, and he refused to go down. Glenn Blackwood had him in the backfield. They both hit him, and it looked like there was no way that he was going to get away. Takes a shot right there from Glenn, and a second shot from Lyle, and absolutely refuses to go down. They were lucky to get him, get him off his feet with a big first down. That's, that's a tremendous play. Uh, he has 66 yards. Not Blackwood, but Craig, and Tyler has 75. So again, a tough to defense. Both these men running effectively. It's Craig's turn to the 18-yard line. Stretching forward, Ernest Roan and Bob Brzezinski collaborated on the tackle. Let's see if, if that 49er problem holds here again. And Bill Walsh said it very succinctly. He said offensive, offensive teams are having more trouble because defenses are playing a lot of zone defense down inside the 20 and we are going to have to run the ball more inside the 20. Let's see if they do it. Trailing by a field goal Montana going for six. No Mike Wilson hadn't quite turned to look for the ball. William Judson on the coverage number 49 for Miami. That'll bring up third down and seven. Montana he has really been remarkably accurate. Looking for Wilson and he's hit. As Bowser again almost every pass play Bowser from that linebacker position comes in on a dog or a blitz 
And on fourth down and seven, in comes Ray Worshing, the no-look field goal kicker, refuses to look at the uprights, hits Montana. He said, the reason that all started, he has such bad vision. He said, I couldn't see the uprights anyway. When I looked at any field goal of distance, they were too far away from my vision. So now that I have uh, the soft contacts, they work, but I, I've established a habit, I just don't look. And he only has missed one field goal all year that hasn't been blocked that last week, a 46-yarder. This is 36. And it is good. Well, he finally looks, but not until he's kicked the ball. And it's tied again at 17. Well, let's take a peek as Ray Worsing does his own peeking after the fact. Kept his head down until the ball was on his way. Well, maybe he's changing his style after missing one last week. <laughs> well, it looked good to him at 17 all. Beautiful kick. kick by Wershing. Walker going to gamble. He's in trouble, but breaks out of there and does get it past the 20 to the 22 yard line. That took quite an effort by Fulton Walker. Fans still booing about the call a good time ago. Give us to Franklin. Nothing there except red jerseys. Ellison and Turner making the tackle. There they are. Look at Dave Shula. Hey, why not the same pose? <laughs> they both have <laughs> that uh, typical uh, posture of Father Don, Grandfather Don, David presenting him with his first grandchild. Miami and San Francisco started the day at 6 3. Marino. And will they allow the catch? Yes, yes. To Duper. He was knocked out of bounds by the tackle at the 37 yard line. That'll be a first down, a 15 yard throw. Nice pickup, and again, Marino able to use his strength to get that ball over there. And look how the concentration. Duper knows he's going to take the shot, tucks the ball away, showing excellent discipline. Got both feet down in bounds before he was driven out, and that's a big play. Look for a moment like the enthusiasm that had carried the 49er offense down the field of that field goal was going to carry over on the defense. Now the Miami Dolphins have something going. From the 37, a 17 all tie. 11 and a half minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. Franklin Ellison trailing the play, but the man who made the hit was Ronnie Lott, the former All-American in Southern California, one of the best athletes in the NFL. This man, a hitter, his nine career inter interceptions prior to this year, four of them for touchdowns. He has two interceptions this season. And an excellent block out there by Bob Kuchenberg, number 67. After 14 years, he's still getting out in front of those plays through an excellent block for Franklin. A gain of nearly five. Second down. Reno, the pump fake and going long. For Dilburn. Oh! There's the yeah. flag. Somebody hit him too soon. It appeared to be a good call. Hicks and Lott trying to stop the hello, goodbye speed of Mark Duper. And I believe what happened was that Dwight Hicks in coming over cleared on top of the receiver just before the ball arrived and bumped his arm. The official right on the scene did not call it. The official trailing inside did see it and did call it. 44 yard penalty. Let's see if we can spot it from here. It is indeed Hicks and you see him coming from the inside and Lott as well diving in. Tapped him just before the ball arrived. It appeared that Ronnie Lott might have gotten the arm of Duper, and now a flag goes down again. Well, I think they're just trying to give it back to the official. Oh. All right. <laughs> Here, you need this. <laughs> All right, the ball is inside the 15-yard line. Miami and the 49ers tied at 17 with 10 minutes and 44 seconds. You may not be able to hear the signals, Dick. Franklin. He's inside the 10 yard line to the nine before Ellison and Williamson can make the tackle. So Miami driving toward a possible go ahead score here at Candlestick. Ball at the nine yard line, second and five for Miami. Franklin again gets only a couple submarining well on the play was Williamson, who came up from his safety spot. Carlton Williamson from the University of Pittsburgh, native of Atlanta. Dick, this is an area of the field where it's very important that you have defensive backs who are willing to tackle. Your offense or your defensive linemen really are committed to stopping the shots right up the middle, and you've got to have those good 
hard hitting defensive backs who will come up and stop those backs when they break to the outside. That's what the 49ers have done effectively on that particular play and and really for out for throughout the last few seasons. Third and a long two outside the six. They go with three tight ends. Roy Foster being the third as a blocker. And the defense of the 49ers stacks him up at the five short of the first down. Ellison on top but Ronnie Lott was down low and here comes Von Schaumann to try the field goal that would give Miami the lead but already a moral victory for that San Francisco defense. Von Schaumann hit 35 yard field goal earlier. This is 28 yards. Make that 23 yards. And Miami has the lead. Boy that ball had a wicked hook on it. It's a good thing it wasn't. From outside the 40 yard line. Von Schaumann has given the Dolphins the three point lead. Both teams had a further possession but failed to score. Now, inside the last two minutes, the 49ers have the football. Second down and eight, trailing by three. There's oh, Craig. Boy. First down at the 21. Now, I think they're in range now. I started to tell uh, our audience, Nick, I talked to Worship before well, yesterday during practice, and I asked him, I said, does it make a difference to have the stadium completely closed in? It was open at one time. He said, I wasn't here before. And I said, I've forgotten how old I was. Great play by Roger Craig and a good call by Bill Walsh. Knew where the opening was, guessed appropriately, and Montana able to find the open man. Montana operating and you could see him hobbling even heading for the line with a bruise just above the left knee. Yeah, there's so much attention to Clark going deep that Craig has been open underneath. Here's Craig again to the 19. Fumble. Fumbles and Miami has recovered. <laughs> Doug Betters came up with a football as Craig and that may have been a factor of his just carrying the ball so much being used so often that fatigue may have entered. Well, a young man like that is throwing himself emotionally into the game, and he really had carried the ball down the field on his own effort. Now, they just stripped the ball here. Vetters gets inside Brzezinski. I think it's Brzezinski, actually, that stripped the ball away, and it is indeed Vetters who reaches out with that long arm, he and Bowser, and came up with the football, but that is the biggest play so far of the ball game for the defense of the Miami Dolphins. Now let's see what the 49er defense does. Miami with a three point lead, 146 left. Franklin. And the play made again by Carlton Williamson, who's had an outstanding day forcing the run from his safety position. And you can expect the ball to go to Franklin several times. You see the way he carries it, he puts both hands on the football. So 49ers use a timeout. That's the boardroom there, Mahogany Row. You wouldn't mind uh, having a chance to uh, put one of those names on the door of your professional football team. I'll tell you, they, those men have earned the right to carry those numbers, too. It's Franklin stopped at the 25-yard line. It'll be third and five, timeout, with 134 left. So what can happen here, San Francisco, should they stop Miami? Another timeout. We'll get the ball with more than a minute remaining, but with all their timeouts spent. It's third and five. What a big down here. Let's see if he'll throw the football, Dick. Nope, it's Franklin. And he didn't make it. He stopped at the 29-yard line, fourth and one. A timeout called with 129 left. Now let's climb inside of the 49ers thinking caps for a second. Roby had a putt, punt block just a few weeks ago uh, against the New York Jets. Turned out to be one of the big plays in that game. Let's see if they go after it here. The knock is that he is very slow to kick the ball. He's only had one block, but let's see if they decide to go after it here. Certainly the 49ers have proven themselves to be a tough opponent today. They've been able to do most everything they wanted to, except get a few more points on the board. They'd like to get the football back here, preferably on a block punt. If not that, on a good return from Dana McLean. As if they have the return on, they're double teaming the two wide men for Miami. Oh, here they come inside. They, they've tried to guess with the snap. They're trying to force them to take too long here, too. Down to 10 seconds. Gets it away. McLemore at his 32. 
Oh, Great what a play. play. That was a sensational play by Heflin, Vince Heflin, because McLemore had at least 10 or 15 more yards upfield had Heflin not made the short tackle. A 40 yard punt. San Francisco brings the offense in. No, they have no timeouts. That's right. They had to take the rest of them and stopping the offense there. A minute 20, that means the ball will have to be played to the sideline. Ronaldo Nehemiah is in the game. The world class hurdler is to the left. Montana. Oh, they can't afford Fumble. that. He fumbles, and Miami has it again. Montana pressured by Baumhauer better and Betters, and Betters comes up with a loose ball. Baumhauer just knocked the ball loose and betters with another big big play. So with a minute 12 left there's no way the 49ers can stop the clock. Let's see who creates the problem for Montana. There's Baumhauer 73 powering straight ahead and he's able to reach in knock it loose and better 75 trailing the play says I got another. It looked to me like Montana was switching the ball from right hand to left hand to tuck it away from the traffic and right in the middle of the switch Bob Baumhauer just reached out with that long arm and slapped it away. And it's only a matter of executing a couple of successful snaps now for Miami. Now here comes the final play of the game. Now they're under 30. No way to stop the clock. And it's over. The Miami Dolphins have made it four in a row under Dan Marino, the brilliant young quarterback from Pittsburgh. And the Toa Upavon Shaman, which has been quiet for a while, comes through with two key field goals. And Miami has beaten San Francisco 20 to 17. The 49ers have won only one of their last 10 at home for Merlin Olson, Dick Enberg. So long from San Francisco. Goodbye, San Francisco. Well, as far as uh, I could see, that game really boiled down to field goals and fumbles. But where does that put the 49ers? Well, it's really different strokes for different folks' time, Nikki. The Dolphins prove that they're a team heading for the playoffs and can look forward to next week's game at New England with growing confidence. While the 49ers squandered away a chance to break that home jinx and now have to live through a week of deep frustration as they wait for the visit of the tough New Orleans Saints. Down 20 to 17, San Francisco running back Roger Craig rushes for 21 yards and catches two passes for 21 more, only to fumble with an easy field goal range on the Miami 20 yard line. But for a moment, fate smiled on the 49ers and they struck goal when the defense held, forcing Miami to punt. It took only one play for that home field jinx to reassert itself, and Montana fumbled away the game with one minute, 20 seconds left. To put it all simply, if you can't win at home, then you can't be the champions of the NFL. For Miami, the sky's the limit. Defensive end Doug Batters, with a league-leading 14 sacks, proves that the Dolphins' defense is healthy, wealthy, and wise. And with that Marino-led offense, I'm reminded of that legendary 1972 Dolphins team who went undefeated all the way to the big one, the Super Bowl. In 1972, the Miami Dolphins became the first and only team in NFL history to go through an entire season unbeaten and untied. The Dolphins were a team whose strength was in its balance rather than brilliance. Fullback Larry Zonka, number 39, was the power gear in Miami's grinding, steady, mistake-proof offense. They conquered the Washington Redskins in the Super Bowl and ended the year with 17 wins and no defeats. For one season, no team was ever better than Don Shula's 1972 Miami Dolphins. Well, well, that's the way to do it. And with the Dolphins on the right track towards the playoffs, let's see how everybody else is getting on. In the National Conference Eastern Division, second place Washington stomped St. Louis 45 to seven. John Riggins notched up two more touchdowns to keep the Redskins on the heels of top place Dallas. The Cowboys rallied from a 10-0 deficit in the second period to win 27-20 over the Eagles. By the time Jawoski hit Glenn Young with a 71-yard touchdown pass, it was too late for Philadelphia.
This 29-yard run by Tony Dorsett, number 33, showed the Cowboys' class and why they record nine wins in ten games. In the Central Division, second place Detroit traveled to New York and came away 15 to 9 victors over the Giants, keeping very much in the hunt for playoff honors. The Green Bay Packers hosted the Cleveland Browns and won handsomely 35 to 21. The Browns linebacker Chip Banks clobbers Lynn Dickey and the loose ball cost the Packers a touchdown. Dickey made up for that with four touchdown passes, none easier than to Paul Kaufman. The Packers stay right behind division leaders Minnesota Vikings. Surprise result of the week here as Tampa Bay Buccaneers earned their first win of the season, 17 to 12. Leroy Selman, number 63, sacked Vikings quarterback Steve Dills twice in the match. And the Buccaneers hit top gear as James Wilder ran into Tampa Bay history with a 75-yard touchdown run from the line of scrimmage. Western Division, the LA Rams go equal top by defeating the Chicago Bears 21 to 14. Sharing a lead, the 49ers and New Orleans, who easily beat the Falcons 27 to 10. Reserve quarterback Dave Wilson threw to Tyrone Young for one of four Saints touchdowns. And on the ground, fullback Hoi Gajan, number 46, stormed through for two more touchdowns. In the American Conference Eastern Division, the New England Patriots took on the Buffalo Bills and completed a season double, winning this time 21 to 7. Baltimore earned their second place by defeating the much troubled New York Jets by 17 to 14. Colts quarterback Mike Ragel clinched the game with the aid of Jets defender Jackson, who tipped a perfect pass onto Baltimore's Curtis Dickey. Central Division leaders, the Pittsburgh Steelers, destroyed the San Diego Chargers 26-3. This sixth straight win was boosted by Gary Anderson's four field goals. Need we say it? Houston lost again, 14 to 55, this time to the Cincinnati Bengals. How many wins by the end of the season? Well, maybe. The Oilers turned the ball over seven times. Five led to Cincinnati scores. It's already been a long season for the Oilers. In the American Western Division, the Raiders hold top position, having defeated the Kansas City Chiefs 28 to 20. This game was significant for quarterback Jim Plunkett, who returned to match-winning form as an injury to quarterback Mark Wilson puts him out for six weeks. After the Denver-Seattle tussle, both sides lie in second place behind the Raiders, the Seahawks winning 27-19 over the Broncos. Star rookie John Elway came back into the fray after an injury to quarterback Steve DeBerg, but his impressive return wasn't enough for a Bronco victory. Celebration of the week goes most definitely to Patriots running back Tony Collins with his touchdown boogie. Well, finally from our fascinating facts file, we've seen many players with tape covering various bits of their anatomy. Well, here are the facts on tape. The NFL is the largest single user of elastic tape in the world. Each squad uses over 125 miles of the stuff per season, and the tape bill for one team, that's about $40,000. Bunch of mummies. Next week, we're off to Atlanta for the visit of the LA Rams. We'll be getting a revealing insight into the role of the place kicker as we follow Mick Luckhurst, the only English player currently left in the NFL, throughout his match day. See you then. See you next week. Good night. <laughs> So many
many things that's held us down But now it looks like things are finally coming around I know we've got a long, long way to go And where we'll end up, I don't know But we won't let nothing hold us back We're putting our show together We're polishing up our act And if you fell for 